Yeah, wish is Stephanie. <laughs> it's been a few days. Um, to make a long story short, uh, I was originally supposed to move out of my apartment at the end of January. Extended it because I thought my renew visa renewal for China would take longer. It didn't. So we're actually moving out in a few weeks and I'm so excited. We're, we're still staying in Shanghai. We're just looking at slightly different places with more space so I can have a recording room and do all kinds of things with this channel and with my podcast. So I hope to um, spice up and uh, tidy up the channel and my podcast really soon, as soon as we move and get all set up and all that kind of good stuff. So not really soon, but soon enough in 2018. So hopefully that will be coming soon. So that has kind of taken over the past two days because we started going around Shanghai looking for new apartments and I'm super excited. Nothing super great yet, but the seal has been broken on two new estate agents and um, yeah, the process is going. I wanted to share with you something, although I haven't done a whole lot of studying in the past two days. Um, I'm still on track for the week, um, 25 per week, and I have a lot of time off the next two days, so I think I might have to do 10 and 10 new words, 10 new words today, 10 new words tomorrow, and just catch up, which is totally and completely fine with me. Um, as long as it's pretty frequent review, um, I don't care if it's five a day or 10 a day, as long as it's 25 per week, 100 a month. Pretty flexible, eh? Yeah, um, that's the goal. Um, but I had an interesting conversation yesterday with someone, and I don't run across this often, but um, I met someone who um, also used the visual form of the language, also known as this writing script, to learn the Chinese language. Now, he did this years ago, and he's way ahead of me as far as writing, reading, writing, and speaking. And speaking, he's fluent as far as I can tell, but I'm not sure I'm engaged. I said one sentence last night in Chinese that I saw, thought was correct, and it got translated to the same pinyin, but probably different tones. <sighs> so anyway, <laughs> see, trying to speak demotivates me. Playing with the language, the written language motivates me. See how I work? Um, so anyway, so I had this conversation, which was really, really awesome about learning to read the Chinese language. And he's gotten to the point where his, um, he uh, often gets messages that he sees in written form, in handwritten form in Chinese and in Chinese cursive. And so our conversation was about Chinese cursive, which I know nothing about. Um, you may have seen in some previous videos, videos over here, over here, um, that as I was doing the walkabout videos, um, I came across some and I couldn't even pick out the radicals. Like that's how um, different they are. And let me show you again, because I just gave you a brief version. This is the same script here in just regular, regular script. And then this is cursive. It's the same exact thing, the same exact thing. But look how the curse, how different the cursive is. Crazy, right? So when I see that in the wild, I don't even try because it's so different. Um, but he's like 600 steps ahead of me and he sees this in written form and he has to decipher it. And he sees more than just the two character boxes that you see here. I'm guessing this is a word, but I don't really know what I just showed you, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> excuse me. But um, he sees full sentences and things like that and full meaning conveyed kind of communications and has and had a really hard time uh, deciphering them, and I hope it's okay to share the story because I'm not sharing people's, um, anyway, I'm not revealing anything super personal, I don't think, and if I am, please let me know and I'll totally remove the video. But I thought this was fascinating because he was talking about how not only the look of the characters are different and the look of the words are different and the, the written form is different, but they actually start to remove certain components or certain words. I don't quite know enough to understand it, but there's things in the quote-unquote normal script that go away when you go to cursive. And um, and I don't know if doing an English language comparison really works because in my brain, when I learned cursive, my teachers were uh, those kinds of writing teachers that have a ruler near them that they can't technically hit you with, but you don't know that as a kid. So they were really, really strict. So we had to do cursive like insanely uh, methodically, perfectly, the, the T, le the top of the T stroke length had to be perfect, and the loop at the bottom had to be correct. I mean, everything it was just focused on accuracy to a degree that was probably why 
I'm much more leaning towards fluency than accuracy in the balance that is language used as communication. Anyway, so I don't know that I can make an English comparison because when I think about it, I think cursive, cursive, uh, English cursive. Yeah, actually, hold on, because S's look really different. See, this I can actually draw for you because I had to practice so much as a child. Cursive. Ugh. Let me show you my, let me show you my last name in regular, quote unquote, regular English, and then in cursive. And this is one of the things I hated. Oh God, doing this brings back so many memories. Okay, so here's my last name. <laughs> of course the first word I think of, right? So here's my last name in regular print, in print, printed English, and here's cursive. I hated doing this because look at the difference between this F and this F, right? And then you have to link everything together. You're not supposed to lift your pencil up from the paper. So I hope you can see that okay. So yeah, so there is quite a difference in look. And if I remember right, the difference between F and T, I'm not even sure if I'm doing the F right. It's been so many years since I've used this. One of them has this thing over here. I forget if it's the F or the T, but the F and the T in cursive English looks really, really different. I'm not gonna look it up, it's not important. The thing is, I think that's pretty one for one, easy to follow. And S is the other one. Like if you look here, C in print and then C, this is the S right here. That looks pretty weird, right? But it still looks like it can be a one to one correspondence. So as far as I remember, we don't really lose any letters, but because Chinese doesn't have letters, they have radicals, characters, character boxes, words. Um, it's a very different system. So when he was saying that some components, I'm just going to use components because I'm not sure if it's radicals or sound components, meaning components, uh, words, I'm not sure exactly what's missing in the sentences. And I'm only showing you words. Uh, in English cursive, you don't link word to word. In Chinese, I'm not sure. But this kind of exploded in my head because as far as I'm going with my goals with learning Chinese, um, newspapers is 100% my goal to be able to read newspapers. Um, I would like to get to social media sites because I think that's more used, more common, um, and more timely. You get the information right away and let's face it, less touched and edited. It's from people um, directly, not just like there isn't as big of an editing process in any newspaper. I'm not talking about the censorship in China, guys. I'm talking about censorship that comes from editing. Um, so it's those things, but that's like a 200% goal. I don't know if I'll ever get there because this is a really big endeavor. If I can get to newspapers, I'm happy. If I can get to social media sites uh, like Weibo and whatever comes up between now and then in the next couple of years, I'll be super happy. But now I'm thinking, oh my God, to play with the script and to study the script and to just historically take a peek in there, that would be like a 300% goal, right? Because I'd have to really, really know the language and the grammar and be really, really fluent, just like I believe this gentleman is, to do that. But, oh my God, how fascinating is that? I never really thought I would be interested in orthography, the, the writing systems, as much as I've kind of gotten pulled into I used to, honestly, in linguistics classes, which I didn't have to actually take that many of because I was more in the teaching English than the linguistics classes. And yes, they are separate in higher education. Figure that one out. Um, but I, I, I didn't like them because they were so separate that I felt like meaning was not considered in the linguistics classes, that it was so focused on the form that it, it separated from meaning and I don't like that complete separation that I experienced. I'm not saying this is for all linguistics classes. Come on. Some of my heroes are linguists like um, David Crystal, John McWhorter. Let's be real. Um, nothing's 100%, but that's the experience I had in those classes. Not with those people. I've never had classes with those people. I would love to have classes with those people. I would love to have conversations with David Crystal about his text message research. Again, written form. Um, so Dr. Crystal, if you're out there, hi. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, that's likely. Anyway, the point is, um, I wonder if I will end up back where I came, where I left from a year ago, eventually, after I get to that fluency stage, will I want to deep dive into the written form in a way that is so geeky that I wouldn't even have 54 subscribers, I'd have like one, and it'd be myself. I don't know, but it's it just blew my mind yesterday to think of the script like that, where you would lose parts of the sentence when you went from one form to another form. And holy cow, as if Chinese is not hard enough to read, then making that leap when you go to that form. Whoa! <laughs> That's all I can say. That is my utter and complete reaction to this, is holy cow, I didn't even realize that layer of the language existed. So literally I could spend the rest of my life studying the language. That's the conclusion that I came to, which in some ways, totally fine with. You gotta do something with your time and, um, and uh, you know, learning to communicate in a different language. I think it's a pretty good use of my spare time. It's kind of overtaken my spare time, but you know what? Eh, gotta do something. Anyway, if you know anything about Chinese cursive or your, if you tried to learn it, if you are learning it, if you write it fluently, um, um, there are some Chinese native speakers that are following the site and I can only imagine how much you're laughing at my Chinese abilities, but if you are, thank you for following. And share your information below. When when you learned it as a child or whenever it's taught, what was your experience? What was your reaction? From the few examples I gave you of English, how does that compare to you? I would love to know your reaction to this and a comparison between the two language and the print versus written form in English and whatever they're called in the Chinese language. Um, this is something I knew about but haven't really spent time with and hadn't really talked to anybody about um hadn't really talked to anybody who was able to decipher um this language before so it's pretty exciting to meet another non-native speaker who's gotten that far in the language pretty exciting and pretty inspiring let me just say that yeah so woohoo okay more coming soon after i study uh wish me luck Tatian.